praise ye the Lord. Praise God in this uh, sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. All right, amen. Okay. I did all those songs because it all pointed to going through the fire. And our message today is about going through the fire. And I was um, telling Bob this morning how the Most High gave me that title. And the only thing I could think about was Shaka Khan's song, Through the Fire. <laughs> and um, you know, and when, when you think about it, not the first part of the song, you know, there's parts of the song that we could actually apply, you know, to the Most High. You know, are we willing to go through the fire for Him? What are we willing to go through? Because this, um, even though, um, you know, His burdens are light, the reason they're light is because we trust Him and we, you know, um, uh, uh, allow Him to order our steps. We follow the path that he put before us and we obey him and we praise him and we worship him and we trust him. And when we do that, he is always there with us. And I'll talk about that, um, you know, a little further. But anyway, I thought about that song, you know, um, Through the Fire that Shaka Khan did years ago. Um, I don't remember exactly. I think it was in like, uh, I know it was in the 1900s. Some people weren't even born. <laughs> at that time, but I, I'm thinking it was like 1970 something, 79 or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, but uh, I, you know, I thought about that song, and um, you know that because it was about a relationship with someone, and the Most High wants us to have a relationship with Him, and as believers and followers of Yahshua, we want to have that relationship with the Father, you know. And so, anyway, but we have to understand that. Sometimes we got, we're, we're, we're going to go through that fire. And so I'm going to talk about that today. And um, so I'm going to start off with 1 Peter 4 and 12. 1 Peter 4 and 12 says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. We have to expect that at some point in time, we're going to experience trials. We're going to experience, ex experience fiery trials. Now, when we think about fire, um, when I look that word up, it means calamity. And it also means to te uh, a test of character. So it could go either way. It could be something that's... that's um, a calamity that's that's uh, devastating, but it could also be something that um, uh, that will build our character. So I'm going to talk about different aspects of going through the fire. Um, you know, sometimes sometimes we go through the fire, and I'm going to cover this part first. Sometimes we go through the fire um, because of sin. And I'm going to talk about that for a little bit. I know sometimes we go through the fire because somebody gets offended by what we believe and what we stand for. And sometimes they get, you know, where they want to um, do revenge on us or, or um, try to ruin us because they hate or oppose what we stand for. But, you know, right now I want to talk about the possibility that we're going, uh, whoever it is, you know, may be going through fire because of sin. So when we consider the possibility of sin in our life, the Most High will allow trouble to come into our lives sometimes to, so that uh, He can draw us closer to Him. Uh, he will allow us to be beautifully broken. That was the song we played also. And He will allow us to be gracefully broken. Because, you know, 
this is this is what he's trying to do. He's he's showing his mercy when he allows us to have that brokenness, to experience that brokenness so that we can get closer to him, so we can look to him, so that we can call on him. And so he allows that brokenness. You know, we have to remember that, um, you know, we need to examine ourselves. We need to take a look at ourselves, a, a, a good hard look at ourselves and what we're doing and our mindset and our feelings and all of that to make sure that all of that lines up with the word of the most high God. And when we allow that to line up with the word, then, um, you know, um, or, or if we see that, you know, there's like a chink in the armor, you know, a flaw or something where we're missing out, you know, then examining ourselves gives us the opportunity to see it and then do something about it so that we can line everything up with the word of the Most High. We have to humble ourselves and we have to also, uh, when we realize it, uh, uh, repent of whatever that sin may be. And so um, anyway, we, we, um, we turn to him and we look to him because if we repent, if we, and, and repenting means is, is more than just saying, I'm sorry, um, you know, because sometimes people say they're sorry because they got caught doing something, not because they really regret and have sorrow for uh, what they did and, and, and want to change and not do it again. But, um, you know, that's, but, but that's not repentance. Repentance is actually changing your mind and changing your emotions toward a particular sin. You know, all sin is against the Most High God, and we have to get to a point where we actually hate sin. And now, if we see other people sinning, it doesn't mean we hate that person. We hate what they do, just like we hate when we do something wrong. We hate the sin, but we love the person that, you know, regardless, we still love everyone. And the Most High loves everyone. That's why he sent his son, because he loved everybody and loves everyone. The, I, the, a person, there's not a person that ever existed nor will exist that um, the Most High did not a, provide a way out for. He provided that way out through Yeshua HaMashiach as our Savior, okay? So um, anyway, we're we're... Uh, he, he loves everyone, and so we are to love everyone. We just um, are to hate sin. We're to, to just loathe it, just hate it uh, so much that we don't want any part of it, okay? Now, sin is not the only reason why we may have to go through the fire. There's other reasons, such as uh, going through the fire of temptation, especially when you first become a believer. When a person first becomes a believer or, or, or makes a decision that, um, for example, if they're called to uh, a, a particular um, work for the Most High, especially, you know, those different things like that. It's, again, like I said, when a person becomes a new believer, the enemy is going to come in and he is going to try to uh, turn you around and, and uh, 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 back around to the wrong way. He's going to try to send people to you and he's going to do everything he can to try to deter you from following the Most High. But you have to set in your mind, you know, uh, there's a scripture that talks about, um, set your face like a flint. You know, you have to set in your mind that you're gonna do what the Most High wants you to do, that you're gonna follow Him through thick and thin, through good times and bad times, and even through the fire of temptation. When that temptation comes, you know, because as like I said, the enemy is gonna try to do that. Um, he's gonna try to make you fall. And so when he does that, um, then you have to um, uh, uh, determine that you are going to stick with the Most High God because He will provide a way out. He always provides a way out. Now, we're not the only ones that experience the fire, to go through the fire of temptation. Yahshua, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Savior, our Messiah, He went through the fire of temptation as well. Matthew 6, verse, um, starting at verse 16, Matthew 6, Starting at verse 16, I have some glasses here somewhere. Okay, here we go. 
starting at verse 16. And let me see. Did I have that? I think I gave you the wrong scripture. No, 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 no. Chapter 3. Um, I, I gave you the wrong one. Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. And, uh, and I forgot that scripture in Peter. Did I read that? I did already. All right. Um, okay, chapter 3, verse 16. And when uh, and Yahshua, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the spirit of the Most High God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, "This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased." Then um, was Yahshua led up to the uh, of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And, he, and, and so we see here that after Yahshua was baptized, he and he, and it even says here, he is the son of the most high God. And he was baptized and immediately right then the spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So everyone, everyone is tempted at some point in time. All right. Um, another and another reason. Uh, and of course, he um, he prevailed because he used the word of the Most High, the word of the scriptures, because uh, he kept saying, it is written, it is written, it is written, you know. And he went on and, and, and he did not bow down to the enemy. It got to a point where the enemy even said, well, look at this, look at the whole world. I can give you the whole world if you'll bow down to me. But he said, no, he wouldn't do it. And he said, it is written <laughs> uh, in, in, in verse 10, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship Yahweh thy Elohim, and him only shalt thy serve. And so he, he uh, use the word against the enemy. And that's an important thing because we have to know that we, if we hide the word, we get into the word, we study the word and we hide it in our heart. We make it part of us. When the enemy comes to attack, the enemy tries to, um, uh, take us through the fire of temptation that we can stand strong by using the word and telling the enemy to, to, to go. To, to leave me alone, to, you know, I'm going to worship the most high God, you know, and just use the word, start using the word against the enemy. Another reason why we might go into, uh, go through the fire is for testing, okay? This is for the purpose of strengthening us so that uh, we can be stronger in the, our areas of weakness because everybody has a weakness here and there. And so we go through the fire of testing to strengthen us. Romans 5 verses 1 through 5. And, and let me read that. And I know I'm going kind of fast here. Um, okay. Romans uh, 5 verses 1 through 5 says, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with Yahweh our Elohim through um, uh, Yahshua HaMashiach. Uh, Jesus Christ, by whom we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope uh, of the in hope of the glory of Elohim, the most high God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope. And hope making not a shame because the love of the Most High God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. All right. And so, you know, we we go through these things to make us stronger. And it talks about patience. That word patience doesn't necessarily mean that we just sit down and twiddle our thumbs, you know, and just wait and wait and wait. That word patience, patience means endurance. And little by little, as we go through these things, be, as we go through these, this, this, this fire um, to strengthen us, we become stronger and stronger because our endurance 
increases as we go. And when that endurance increases like that, we have experience and that experience gives us hope and lets us know that there's a better day coming and, and hope, it says hope makes not a shame. And so, you know, we, we don't have anything to be ashamed about because the most high God is always on our side, all right? And so uh, we look at also 2 Corinthians 6 and 4, but in all things approving ourselves as the minister of the Most High God in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, and in distresses. And it goes on in stripes and in, in uh, imprisonments and tumults and um, in labors and watchings and fastings. Um, by pureness of knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unafraid. And it goes on, you know, the word of truth and so many other things, the power of the most high God. And those are the things that help build us up. Those are the things that help make us strong. And we come, become stronger and stronger and stronger each time as we go through things. And so when we go through these, um, the, the fire of testing, we don't become weaker. We, we're supposed to become stronger. All right. James 1, um, James chapter one, verses three and four says, but knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have a perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. Um, and so what he's saying here, we, we go through these things and we become stronger. We can endure more and, and, um, Everything will come together exactly right and everything that we need will be taken care of. We have no worries. We have, you know, we should not have any stress because we trust in the most high God. He will provide everything for us. That word perfect here means complete. He will complete us. And, and so not, it doesn't mean sinless perfection, but it means complete, okay? And so this is what happens when we go through the trial, I mean, uh, go through the fire of testing. There's another reason why we go through the fire, and this is in preparation for the return of the Messiah, especially in these last days. And so we'll go to uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. 1 Peter chapter 1 verses six and seven. And it says, wherein greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of the, um, of the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. And so, you know, so at his coming, we may go through the fire, um, you know, uh, in preparation for his return. But we have joy because we know that he is coming again. You know, when he, um, when he ascended up into heaven, uh, it, it wasn't for him to just say, okay, I've done my part. <laughs> I'm just going to sit here and wait. No, he is coming back. And so we welcome his return. And so we, um, you know, we may go through fire in preparation for his return. Okay. Another reason we may go through the fire is to receive power and to keep us humble. And that will take us to 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Let me see. Uh, let me see, did I skip one? 2 Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 6 through 10. Chapter 12, verses 6 through 10. For though I would desire to glory... And this is, this is uh, Paul talking here, uh, 
For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth me, lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Let me say here, this thorn in the flesh is, a messenger of Satan to buffet him, all right? In other words, the enemy made a special um, uh, deal, a special, a special assignment uh, to just keep messing with Paul, to just keep bothering him, to keep doing stuff to him, and he, he was okay with it. Uh, Paul was like, all right, this messenger of Satan keeps messing with me, but that's okay because that's probably what I need to keep me humble. And sometimes we need to have that kind of thing happen to keep us humble. And uh, because the Most High knows, <laughs> sometimes uh, people get the big head, you know, they think they're more than they are. And so he allows the enemy to, to, to do some things and we go through that fire uh, to keep us humble, all right? Um, now this takes me to the next reason why we may go through the fire and that's ministry. Now, the word minister means servant. It means servant. And so every believer and follower of Yahshua is a minister. We all have gifts of the Spirit that we are to use um, in service for Him. We are to represent Him. And so uh, He gives us the power to serve. Uh, and and when, we, when we say the model prayer, um, some people call it the Lord's Prayer, but it's the model prayer. He gives us an example of how to pray. And in, and in that prayer, um, and we should pray that prayer, and in that prayer, it says, not my will, but thy will be done. And, and that's how we need to be. You know, we have desires to do this, this, and this, but sometimes this, this, and this needs to be set aside or done away with altogether so that we can serve him, so that we can represent him and minister, serve other people. Because there are people in need. There are people that need to hear the word. There are people that need to be comforted with the word. There are people that need healing. There are people that need deliverance. There's so many things and needs that people have. And he has us here as his representatives to go and minister for him and minister to the people, all right? And so we have uh, next Ephesians chapter three, Verse 7, Ephesians 3 and 7, and that says, where, uh, and this is Paul talking again, and he's, and he's talking about how he's an apostle to the Gentiles. You know, he, he was chosen to go to a people that um, uh, he didn't expect to, to go to. And so in, um, in, in, in verse 7, he says, Where, uh, Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of grace of Yahweh, or the Most High God, given to me by the effectual working of his power. And so he gave him the power and he gave him ev the gift and everything that he needed to go out and, and minister um, to the Gentiles. Now, um, uh, somebody, like I said, he wasn't expecting to, to minister to. And there's a lot of times where we as believers and followers of Yahshua um, have to minister to people that we don't expect that we sh uh, are, are, are going to be ministering to. Um, but we, we, we don't go with what we want. We go with what he wants. We go with how he leads us. And so sometimes he may lead us to someone that um, we might uh, arrogantly, I'm going to say it, arrogantly think um, uh, don't deserve it. Well, 
whatever it is that he has for each person to do, whether um, it seems as though that person doesn't deserve it, every person deserves the word of the Most High. And so we are minister, we are to serve. And who are we to look down on anyone else? We cannot, we have to be humble and follow his directions and, and all of that. So that means sometimes, excuse me, sometimes we have to go through the fire um, and, um, um, you know, in regards to what he wants for us to do. And so anyway, um, when we when we look about it, look at it, and we 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 consider his word, and we start to um, study his word and learn his word and and have it in our heart and in our mind and all of that, it's kind of like what Jeremiah said that his word is like fire. I'll shut up in my bones, and so when um, you know when you're led by the Spirit to go and do something. Uh, You'd be hard pressed to stand against the spirit because, you know, something inside you is going to be saying, let go do it, go do it. And, and, and then the emotions and, the, you know, your mind get in there and say, well, but what if? And all that. No, no, go do it, you know, and because that's what he wants us to do. And, and so sometimes we may have to go through the fire also because his light is in us his light. He said, um, let's go to Matthew 5. Matthew chapter 5. Um, and I'm hoping to get done with this because I got another set of scriptures after this and, and that'll be it. Matthew chapter 5 verse 13. Okay. Chapter 5 verse 13 and we're going to read down to verse 16. Um, oops. All right. He says, and this is Joshua talking. Uh, he's talking to the disciples, but we are also his disciples. We are his students and we follow him. All right. And so he says, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? Uh, it is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out, to be trodden underfoot of men. But ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light the candle and put it under the bushel, but on a candlestick stick, that it gives light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, we don't do things just to be seen. But we do things to reflect him in us, to reflect that light, um, that his light is in us. And so we do those things for that purpose. And so we don't, uh, his light is in us and we, we don't hide it. We, we shouldn't hide it. We shouldn't, um, you know, uh, try to act like it's not there. When the time comes, we represent him and I've said that a whole lot of times already represent him okay regardless of the reason though that we go through the fire understand that believers and followers of Yahshua we are never alone never Daniel records this account which most of you have heard concerning three of his friends and that's in um, the book of Daniel chapter 3 Daniel chapter 3 and we'll start, we'll read at uh, verse five. And I'm just going to pick some scriptures out of here. When you get a chance, read all of the, uh, the whole thing. But uh, starting at verse five, it says, um, let's see, let me start at four. When a herald cry aloud to you, it is commanded, O people, nations and languages, that at that time ye hear the sound of the uh, cornet, flute, harp, um, sackbut, salpri, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And whosoever falleth not down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. All right, so, so he had this mandate 
that everybody is supposed to worship this statue, this golden statue of Nebuchadnezzar, and if they don't, right away, they don't, they, you know, it's like you don't get a trial or anything. You don't worship, and people see that you're not worshiping, right away you get thrown into this fiery furnace. Let's look at verse 11. Verse 11 says, And whosoever falls not down and worship, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Um, there are, and there, and he goes on and he says, There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the providence of Babylon, Shadrach, and, and, and these are guys are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee, and they worship not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and, and, and then they brought these men before the king. And in verse 14, it says, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, do, ye, sir, do, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I set up? And I want to tell you, these guys, these, these three guys, they were, um, you know, in a position. In verse 12, it says, you know, that they had position over the affairs of the providence. But they were not exempt. They did not uh, worship uh, those, uh, and serve those gods and worship the golden image of Nebuchadnezzar. And so let's go down to verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said unto the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this manner. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. And in the 18th verse, But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. All right. They told him, either way, the Most High will deliver us, and if not, we still will not serve those gods and we will not worship that golden image. It's not going to happen regardless of what you say or what you do. It's not going to happen. They stood their ground regardless of what they were facing. All right. They stood their ground. Um, I, I would almost say that those two verses should should probably be on on the refrigerator <laughs> because there's so many false gods out here now and um the enemy um uh, has different things set up for people to worship the false gods to worship uh the so-called golden image even though there's right now not a literal golden image it could be I don't know I don't think so but it may be but we have to prepare to be able to be willing to stand our ground regardless of what happens. Let's go on to verse 19. It says, Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his vi uh, visage, visage was changed. His ex expression was changed against, uh, and, and, and his mindset was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was uh, wont to be heat and commanded the most mighty men that were in the army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. All right. And then um, we go on to verse, we're going to read down. Uh, to verse 27. And then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and they were cast into the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and these 
three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound in the midst of the fiery furnace. They were, they were shoved in there, and the people that shoved them in there, they were killed. And then when they went in, they, uh, 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 those three, they, they, they fell on the, on, on the ground, on the, on the uh, uh, floor of that furnace. And then in verse 24, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said to the counselors, did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, true, O king. And he answered and said, lo, I see four men, four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of the most high God. He saw four men instead of three, okay? Like the son of the most high God. We are never alone when we go through the fire. In verse 26, then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning furnace, fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the most high God, come forth, come hither, then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. He recognized, he even said, that called them servants of the Most High God. When we represent the Most High God, when we go through the fire, people will see him. So sometimes we go through the fire so that people can see him. In verse 29, then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God, the Most High God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who, who has sent his angel and has delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any God except their own most high God. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their homes shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. And then the kings promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Okay, not only did they go through the fire and they represented well, because of that, everything changed and, and, and they were to worship no one else other than the Most High God. But that wasn't all. At the end of that, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were elevated to an even higher position than what they had to begin with. We got to get ready. Everybody, get ready. Because we may go through the fire, but understand that we are not alone and the best is yet to come. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your mercy and your grace, and I thank you for your word, and I thank you that we are never, ever alone, and all we have to do is trust and rely on you, and you will see us through. Whether it's good circumstances or fiery circumstances, you are with us, and you will never, ever leave us, and I thank you for that. If there's anyone listening that don't know you as their Savior, I pray that you will just touch their heart, that you will convict them, and that um, they will just open it up to receive the, the, the saving grace that you have provided through Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Jesus the, the Messiah, and those that are weak, that they may be made strong, and we give you all the glory and the praise in Yahshua's name. Amen. And we'll have a song. <laughs> All right. Okay. Joshua 1.9.
Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, that the Lord thy God is with you whithersoever thou goest. And the blessing. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious to thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for coming. Mm-hmm. <laughs>